Today, I'll tell you how I learned to create art projects using Arduino and basic coding. Because we believe that everyone can improve the world, we don't stop learning. Try it. Look for the new ways to improve the world. Improve yourself at home and take the things we find and combine them. That's it. There's a plus. Hello, I'm Patrick, and this is the second build for creative engineering with Mark Rober. Hello, I'm Patrick, and this is the second build for creative engineering with Mark Rober. On the first build, we use only mechanical engineering to solve our problems. That means we need human to interact with the machine in order for it to work. But for the second build, our goal is to learn how to use electrical engineering to control the machine. And the theme for the second build is art. Well, honestly, I'm more like a form follow function kind of guy. So for me, the function, the purpose of art is to communicate. Wow. So for this build, I want to communicate a science principle using art. Recently, I saw this standing wave demonstration in the museum. I was fascinated by how they use just one or two motors and one string to create this kind of like sculpture in the air, like representing waves. That is so, that is so cool for me. Part of my job as a designer and maker is to create art pieces for artists. Most projects I've done includes a structural design, 3D modeling and 3D printing, assembling mechanical parts, electronics, and coding. But to tell you the truth, I've never done the coding myself. So this is my first official coding project, and it's gonna be very basic, but I'm so excited. I started by doing a proof of concept experiment. By using a power screwdriver and a motor that I already have, I tried to figure out if I can create a wave like in a video and what factors that I need to think about. I designed what I call a string catcher. It's the part for attach the string or rope to the motor. The reason it looks like this because I want to be able to select how far I can tie the string to it related to the center of rotation. After the initial test, I thought it was possible for me to create the wave just like in the video. My goal is to at least be able to control the speed and acceleration of the motor so that I have more consistency in creating the waves. So I started working on the codes. All right, after about six hours straight, trying to learn how to code, I finally got the code that I want, and it works properly. I don't think you need that many hours just to write the codes for what I want to do. It took me that long because I also wanted to understand what each line really meant. That means looking up in the Arduino language reference and painstakingly read all the related commands. I did it because I knew if I just copy and paste the codes, I would not remember it after. But at least this way, I understand the principle of writing codes for Arduino. And here's how it's gonna work. I use Arduino Uno, a motor power supply for motor, and a motor driver. I will control the motor speed using these buttons. The challenge is how to make the motor change its speed slowly. Like for example, if I want the motor to go from zero to 100%, it would not just 100% like that, it would slowly increase the speed, like this. Same goes for slowing down, for example, from 100 to 50. After proving that I can control the motor speed, I went on to design how I would assemble everything together in the fastest and cheapest way. And this is the result. Well, actually I need it to be black, but I only have a blue filament, so I just go with this. And, and after this, I can like spray paint into black. Next, I will assemble all of this together. It goes into that, like that. Ta-da! 
I used this 3D printed part and some cheap aluminum tubes as a tripod structure. And after I make sure these parts fit together, then it's a matter of printing the exact duplicates of the same part for another end. In the first experiment, I used this white string, which is not stretchy at all. With that experiment, I found out that as the motor spins, you need to move it closer together to create the wave form. So I think instead of this white string, I will use this stretchy, what do you call it? String strap. Okay, now I've tied the whole thing together and finished all the wiring. Here's the moment of truth. I'm gonna start the machine, well, starting with the slowest speed. Okay, it seems to be too slow. Let's go to 50%. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Okay. Okay, maybe the, the string is too stretchy. Let's go to 100%. Okay, seems to be working. Huh. See that? I think the next step will be figuring out how to create more harmonics because right now I can only create two. Maybe I need a faster motors because in the video, the rope spins much faster than mine. I've got just around 860 RPM. And also, I need to do more research and experiment to see what kind of rope I should use to get that perfect elasticity and visibility because right now it's kind of hard to see the waveform. Maybe I need a white rope with more tubular shape and some lighting to make it pop out more. And finally, it can't just be a breadboard with a bunch of wires like this. I need to pack all of this onto the machine and make the interface look cool. Unfortunately, I underestimate the complexity of the waveforming mechanism and ran out of time before I can finish it. I need to start the build 3 now, but I'll come back and finish this project on this channel. So don't forget to hit subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss it. That's it for now. And as always, thank you for watching and let's make something new together here at Me Plus. See you next time.